that government and senior managers, deputy managers, and ADMs have looked for fall people to take the blame for this $60 million boondoggle. Around, and the, uh, Mr. Brock, you have the floor again for five minutes. Ms. Poldock, when did you find out that your team's meeting with Ms. Daly and Mr. Schoenberg was actually recorded? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for the question. When I watched uh, the committee uh, proceeds the night that uh, it occurred on okay. uh, August 7th. And I trust that uh, you haven't ac had access to any transcript. You haven't had access to the actual recording itself. I appreciate your memory. may not be as sharp as it would be if I were asking you what you did last night. So uh, I'll go through some of the details, all right, because the impression I'm hearing about you being so... Uh, managerial-like and concerned regarding her well-being, et cetera, et cetera, can be interpreted differently. So I'm going to go through a couple of areas. One thing that really caught my eye is your confirmation. This is a 17-minute conversation. Literally within the first minute and a half, you use these, these words. I know that you did exchange briefly with the CBA in recent weeks, I know and you know they're probably explained that they're carrying out an investigation on the allegations that are targeting individuals, two, sorry, two individuals within the CBSA. A very interesting use of the word, targeting, because that's precisely what the evidence has shown, that government and senior managers deputy managers and ADMs have looked for fall people to take the blame for this $60 million boondoggle. And there are consequences when people speak out against power, when people speak out against authority. They end up suspended, sometimes without pay. So it's, I'm glad you used the word targeting because that's the first confirmation that Justin Trudeau and his government and his public servants are deliberately targeting individuals to take the blame for this boondoggle. That's one observation. Second observation, you said their investigation includes everything that they're able to put their hands on. There's a couple of holes. Another interesting angle. You ask very early on whether Daly was threatened. And you didn't say that mm. once. You didn't say it twice. You didn't say it three times. In 17 minutes, Ms. Bulldog, mm. you reiterate, if you've been threatened, now is your time to share details. And I would well imagine the people you believed were threatening Diane Daly were her friends, Mr. Utano and Mr. McDonald. Am I correct? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for the question. So you are correct. Yes, I thank you. I have not heard. Thank you. The, I'm no, 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 on. no. I, I have not heard the, the question. I, I'd like to say on what you are correct. I have not heard the proceedings. I'd like to uh, explain why. I you, asked you, you ma'am, this is my time. Or Utano <laughs> threatening Di Diane. Are you, are you saying no? Okay, who then were you suggesting was threatening Just her? generally speaking. There's what evidence were you relying on? None. Who, uh, told you, who told you to use that line of attack? Nobody. Uh, I was essentially, I was, I was making sure that Ms. Daly did not feel, because she was uncomfortable to participate into the investigation. Because judge. she already laid out her position. So why does she need to participate in an optional meeting that you kept stressing was no longer optional? In fact, what really disturbs me is Ms. Daly specifically asked you, I want evidence, I want policy, I want written direction, I want something official that compels me to participate in a meeting that I'm not comfortable with. You agreed that you would provide that, and in fact, you didn't. So why didn't you provide policy? Thank you very much for the question, Mr. Chair. I did, in fact, uh, got... Uh, these policies and I looked at them. Uh, when I looked at them, I realized that the, the meeting was very strongly mandatory for her under the policies that I reviewed. The reason why I did not provide those policies to Ms. Daly is because as I explained previously, I was genuinely trying to offer my offer. 
when I got a hold on, of this policy, she had already accepted to meet with the CBSA. There was no point at that time for me to provide these policies. I don't accept that. I don't accept that at all. You're, you're trying to portray yourself as being really kind to your employees. An employee expresses reservation, concern, feeling pressured to participate in an interview that she doesn't want to do. She asks you for a legitimate question. Give me evidence of policy. You find policy and you deliberately withhold it from Thank her. Thank you, Not Mr. Good Brock. Not good enough. Thank you, Mr. Brock.